gentlemen, I am the one and only DJ Storms. And in just four days, live on the WWE Network, a crazed woman will go one-on-one -on -one with the Queen of Spades for the NXT Women's Championship. Also, the ominous man from Amsterdam puts his NXT world crown on the line against a freak of nature looking to dominate and dismantle him to become the face of NXT. And finally, two men who return to the same place where a brutal, vicious, and physical rivalry began as they look to write a new chapter in a Chicago street fight. But before it's time for the titles to be put at stake, before it's time to write the next chapter, before it is time to take over Chicago, it's time for the rundown! Thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another video right here on YouTube.com, as of course you already know. Who I am, Mr. Controversy, and the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. This is the official rundown for NXT TakeOver Chicago 2, which of course is streaming live this Saturday on the WWE Network from the All-State Arena in Chicago, Illinois, with the main show starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, do not get used to this. I don't normally post on a Tuesday, but you know what? I had some time and I thought, why not kick this week off with a bang? Why not kick this week off with the rundown for TakeOver Chicago? As of course, I got the Lightning Flash update on Friday and then I got the rundown for Money in the Bank on Saturday with special guest star Dr. Huge. I also got TakeOver Chicago 2 on Saturday and then Money in the Bank on Sunday. So it's a pretty big week for wrestling in general. Pretty big week for me. I thought, why the hell not start with a bang? So, let's get right into the matches. There are five matches announced for TakeOver Chicago 2. And I let's start off by talking about Ricochet versus the Velveteen Dream. And I love that this rivalry has been built on one-upsmanship and supremacy. I love the fact that both men basically are having a race to see who gets to the top first. And I love the competitive nature between the Velveteen Dream and Ricochet. I love the cockiness that just oozes off the Velveteen Dream. Just saying that, you know, whatever you can do, the Dream can do better. And Ricochet just answering right back with that beautiful Tope Kun hero over the top rope, getting in the face of Dream and just saying, prove it. So, I expect nothing less than a 5-star classic, 15-20 minute 5-star classic from these two at TakeOver Chicago. And as far as what could come out of it, there's a lot of different ways they can go. Um, I actually think that the best route to go is to have Ricochet beat the Velveteen Dream and Ricochet challenges Adam Cole for the North American Championship. And remember, this, this match doesn't have to be a one-off thing. Ricochet and Velveteen Dream could be visited down the line. Ricochet could defeat Adam Cole, win the North American Championship, and possibly, possibly, Ricochet could hold the title until the takeover before the Royal Rumble, and that is when the Velveteen Dream can beat Ricochet, take the title off of him, and Ricochet could possibly move on to the NXT Championship. Because, put it this way, no matter what the Velveteen Dream does in between Chicago and TakeOver Phoenix, I believe that's when the Royal Rumble is, or that's where the Royal Rumble is next uh, next year. But anything that the Velveteen Dream does is must-see. Anything that the Velveteen Dream touches, it turns to gold. So no matter what Velveteen Dream does, people are always going to keep an eye on him, and people are always going to care. But Ricochet needs this win, and Ricochet should move on to take over Brooklyn to challenge Adam Cole for the North American Championship. I expect a great match at TakeOver Chicago, and Ricochet is going to beat the Velveteen Dream. That's my prediction. Let's talk about a championship match. Let's talk about um, Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era 
defending the NXT Tag Team titles against Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, or Oni Lorcan and Mr. Daniel Birch, as the Undisputed Era calls him. Um, I expect this match to be very hard-hitting. I expect it to be physical. I expect it to be a fight in every sense of the word, because Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, they are very hard-hitting competitors. I've been liking the tag team of Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Uh, Roderick Strong... I love how he's morphed so quickly into this role, just oozing cockiness and charisma. Kyle O'Reilly's entertaining as well with his NWO-style championship guitar jester. And it, I believe it's going to be a very good match. I believe it's going to be one of the hitting the hidden gems in NXT this year. So keep an eye out for that match. As far as the outcome goes, um, the Undisputed Era does not need to lose. The Undisputed Era has been running rough shot over NXT as tag team champions. Now you got Adam Cole as North American champion. Uh, the Undisputed Era. Though Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch are very good and though they are very deserving, I cannot see them winning. I can see the Undisputed Era retaining. The only team as of right now, or the team that is most deserving of taking the titles off the Undisputed Era, which I believe is going to be a takeover Brooklyn, is the War Raiders. Because the War Raiders, they've defeated Heavy Machinery, they've been positioned... In a spot where they've just been dominating every team that they've come across. I mean, you could argue the Street Profits because they are very good baby faces, but they haven't really been doing too much with the Street Profits. And then take a look at TM61, and I really wouldn't mind TM61, but you take a look at TM61 and their recent heel turn, and heel versus heel matches aren't really all that exciting, unless, of course, your sanity in the Altars of Pain at TakeOver Brooklyn last year, because that match was fantastic. But if you're really talking about babyface teams that the crowd genuinely wants to see as champions, I would pick the War Raiders. Because the War Raiders, like I said, they've been positioned in a spot where they've been unstoppable. And the Undisputed Era, they are the tag team champions. There's really no higher that the War Raiders can go other than the tag team championships. But as far as TakeOver Chicago 2 goes, I expect a very good match, and I expect Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly to retain the NXT Tag Team titles. Let's talk about the NXT Women's Championship match. Shayna Baszler defending against Nikki Cross. Now, the build for this match has kind of been intertwined with Dakota Kai versus Shayna Baszler. We know that Nikki Cross was kind of on the outside looking in, and she was kind of the motivator for Dakota Kai, basically saying, stand up to Shayna Baszler, you know, fight fight the bully, and, you know, you could win. And Dakota Kai did just that, and Shayna Baszler recently defeated Dakota Kai in an NXT Women's Championship match not too long ago with that Karafuda Clutch, and I'm loving the Karafuda Clutch. The Karafuda Clutch looks brutal in every sense of the word. And then Nikki Cross, I, lo I love that Nikki Cross... She has been, I don't know if you've been looking on Twitter, but she's been trolling Shayna Baszler on Twitter saying, my little gremlins are going to help me get the title back. Or Shayna Baszler, I decided to give you a rematch for the title that I already beat you for. I, I love how Nikki Cross is using her psychotic nature on Twitter as well, not just on television. She's doing the same thing that the Velveteen Dream and Tommaso Ciampa are doing right now. And Nikki Cross just coming out just with the crazed look in her eye. And Shayna Baszler, she, she's acting like she's legitimately terrified. She's like, that, what the fuck's this? It's like, I, like I'm, I'm legitimately terrified. Like, how, how the hell am I supposed to compete with this? And she doesn't really know what to do. And Shayna, and, uh, Shayna Baszler is just, is just, you know, petrified. Like, how the hell, how the hell do I beat a girl like Nikki Cross? Even though she's attempting, she's attempting to act all tough. Nikki Cross is just coming out there. She doesn't care. She just comes out, just starts throwing punches, starts doing cross bodies. She doesn't care. So I, I expect this match to be a fight in every sense of the word. I expect Nikki Cross to go full throttle. I expect Shayna Baszler to answer Nikki Cross right back. And let me tell you something. I love the way that Nikki Cross has been morphing into her role uh, so well. Nikki Cross and Shayna Baszler are two characters on NXT that have really, really, really carried the division for a while. 
especially uh, Nikki Cross. You know, Nikki Cross, she does not really get the respect and the admiration that she deserves. She is a very underrated competitor, a very underrated character as well. And, you know, now that she's on her own, she's really getting her own spotlight to shine. And she's not just playing uh, valet with sanity. So, now you got Shayna Baszler. We all know Nikki Cross is great in her role, and we all know Nikki Cross is a, is a fighter. She's a brawler. Then you take a look at Shayna Baszler, and Shayna Baszler, she has become almost the female Lars Sullivan, but without all of this, all the dominating, all like the dominating squash matches like that. Shayna Baszler has just become the resident bully. Um, and she really did that when she was in her feud with Ember Moon. Ember Moon was the woman that really opened our eyes to Shayna Baszler and what Shayna Baszler could really do. That feud and those couple of matches that Ember Moon had with Shayna Baszler, it really showed everyone that Shayna Baszler, though she's fairly new and though, she, her, uh, and though her career is only a few years old, she can go and she can morph into a specific role and she can fight when, when, uh, when she needs to fight. So, props to Ember Moon and props to Shayna Baszler as well. Now, Shayna Baszler is facing off against Nikki Cross. Now, as far as the match goes, I expect the match to be a fight, like I said, in every sense of the word. And though I love to see Nikki Cross as a champion in the future, now is not the right time. Matter of fact, I think that Nikki Cross is going up to the main roster with Sanity after this. I expect the match to end... With Shayna Baszler locking in that Carafuda clutch. But, but, Nikki Cross, she's not going to tap. I believe that Nikki Cross is going to pass out rather than tap out. Because you take a look at Nikki Cross, and Nikki Cross, she doesn't really look like the type of woman that you're going to see tap out to any submission hold just because of her crazed nature. But I do believe that Shayna Baszler is going to get the win. Some way, somehow, I expect the Carafuda clutch, and I expect Nikki Cross to pass out. Shayna Baszler retains the NXT Women's Championship. Let's talk about Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, the best program on WWE television this year. These two have done everything in their power to make this feud seem like the biggest feud in WWE history, the most brutal, the most vicious, the most physical the most talked about feud in WWE history. Champa turning on Gargano. Champa coming back, screwing Gargano out of his career. Gargano returning in that unsanctioned match and fighting for 37 minutes to beat Tommaso Champa and regain his job. This feud, I, I have no complaints about this feud. This feud has been done absolutely perfect. Five star feud, feud of the year. Feud of the year, hands down. And Champa, I love how Champa's just coming out and he's just, he's, he's just, you know, just coming off as, you know, I don't give a shit about anyone. He's just saying, you know, that's awesome. You know, I tapped out, but, you know, it was unsanctioned and my knee wasn't 100%. And Johnny, you know, you, you're, you're going on and on about how I, I did something bad, but the fact of the matter is, is that you attacked me. I was defending myself, and you crippled your own wife. Like, I, I, how can you not love Tommaso Ciampa? It, Tommaso Ciampa just has that character that you just desperately want to hate. And matter of fact, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised if Tommaso went out in public. I would not be surprised if people legitimately start insulting him. Because that's how good he has played his role. He has played his role to the point where people in real life will believe that he is that character on television. Johnny Gargano, we all know that Gargano is a great baby face, and we all know that Gargano has been uh, looking to finally end this with Tommaso, and Gargano's been finally looking to get a shot at the NXT Championship, but he can't because Tommaso is always there. And as far as NXT TakeOver Chicago goes... This may be their best encounter yet. The Cruiserweight Classic was very good. Uh, New Orleans was even better. It was voted five stars by Meltzer, and I believe that this one's going to be voted five stars by Meltzer as well. Chicago Street Fight, anything goes. I expect tables. I expect kendo sticks. I expect chairs. I expect 
anything possible to be used. I expect Gargano to perhaps... Gargano could perhaps do what Tommaso did um, to Gargano the last time they, that uh, they were in Chicago. And I believe that this is going to be the end of the feud. I believe that Gargano is going to beat Tommaso Ciampa, and I believe that Gargano is going to move on to the NXT Championship. And the reason why I say that, because think about this. NXT TakeOver Brooklyn is NXT's version of WrestleMania. No matter how you look at it, it is their version of WrestleMania. And in my eyes, there is no bigger match, no bigger match for an NXT TakeOver version of WrestleMania than Johnny Gargano versus Aleister Black for the NXT Championship. And we want to see Gargano in that prime spot. We want to see Gargano win the NXT Championship. If Gargano faces Aleister Black, who's never been beaten in singles competition, and Gargano beats Aleister Black, wins the NXT Championship at Brooklyn, their version of WrestleMania, can you imagine the ovation? Can you imagine the possibilities that we could get in the future? We could possibly see Champa and Gargano for the NXT Championship, maybe during the Royal Rumble, maybe at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn next year during uh, WrestleMania weekend. The possibilities with Gargano as NXT Champion, can you imagine what could happen if Gargano wins the NXT title? That is why I think that Gargano is going to beat Tommaso Ciampa. I think that Gargano is going to finally put an end to this rivalry for now. For now. I don't think this is going to be the end. I think that uh, Tommaso Ciampa, he's going to be NXT Champion. And he's going to take the title off of Johnny Gargano one day. Not today, but one day. And Gargano's going to move up to the main roster. He should move up to SmackDown. And I believe that Ciampa could very well move up to SmackDown with him after Ciampa loses the NXT title and they could continue their feud on SmackDown. Maybe for the US title or for the WWE Championship. Whatever. It doesn't even have to be for a championship. It could just be a feud, period. Anything involving Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, whether it be as a tag team or in a feud together, is golden. Golden. And I believe that Gargano is finally going to Put a stop to the feud for now, and he's going to beat Tommaso Ciampa. I don't know how, but I believe that Gargano's going to walk out victorious. Let's talk about the NXT Championship match, the final match on the card. Aleister Black defending against Lars Sullivan, and I am very impressed with how Lars Sullivan has come along, and I believe that Lars Sullivan has worked his ass off to the point where he has earned this opportunity, and I believe that Lars Sullivan is very deserving of this NXT Championship opportunity. I do not think that he's going to win, though. Though though I love Lars Sullivan, and though I think Lars Sullivan is well-deserving of a championship run, Aleister Black is in a position where he has been built up so much that Lars Sullivan, he doesn't really seem like the guy that's going to take down Aleister Black. Though Lars Sullivan is very believable to uh, take down a guy like Aleister, Lars Sullivan isn't really ready. Aleister Black... He is the face of that brand, and Aleister Black's been doing a very good job at bringing attention to himself and the NXT Championship, and I think that Aleister Black is going to retain the title against Lars Sullivan. I say we are going to get a very good match. I don't expect I don't expect the greatest match of all time. The greatest match of all time was Taker and Shawn Michaels at uh, WrestleMania 25, but if you want to talk about a very good match, I believe that this match will also be looked upon as a very underrated match of 2018. I think Aleister Black and Lars Sullivan, they're going to have a very competitive match. Lars Sullivan is going to make you believe that he's going to win the title, but in the end, he's going to catch that Black Mass spinning heel kick, and Aleister Black is going to retain the NXT Championship. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the rundown for TakeOver Chicago. I would like to thank each and every one of you who tuned into this video. Do not forget to like. Do not forget to comment. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TheDJStorms. Do not forget to check out the Lightning Flash update this Friday. And do not forget to check out the rundown for Money in the Bank with my special guest star, Dr. Hugenstein from the Dr. Huge Show this Saturday. And ladies and gentlemen... I'm the one and only DJ Storms, and this has been The Rundown. I'll see you Friday.